Looking to mix up your core training while really targeting those lower abs and preventing your lower back from becoming achy? Then you'll love these three plank variations, including one move that is a great untraditional and challenging plank option, even if you can't do traditional planks due to shoulder issues. And at the end, I'll share a great quick burner layout so you can use these three moves at the end of your workout. Move number one, dolphin planks. If you really want to target your lower abs, you need to include exercises that utilize the posterior pelvic tilt. This tilting of the pelvis, tucking the hips towards the ribs, really engages that lower portion of the rectus abdominis while also working your glutes. It's a great way to learn how to brace to protect your lower back from aches and pains as well. This dynamic plank variation using the posterior pelvic tilt is a dolphin plank and a great way to challenge your abs. You will use the tuck up to engage those lower abs, but also challenge your abs to protect your spine as you test out your spinal extension, slightly dropping your hips towards the ground. This forces your abs to brace as you extend, but be mindful you don't end up simply engaging your lower back. To do this move, set up in a plank position from your forearms and toes with your feet together. Make sure your shoulders are stacked over your elbows and your upper back is engaged so your shoulders aren't shrugged. Drive back through your heels as you flex your quads to hold in a nice straight line. To improve your base and stability, you can widen your feet out to shoulder width. Then tuck your pelvis under towards your ribs, rounding through your entire spine even as you tuck. Don't let your butt go up in the air and end up shifting your shoulders back behind your elbows. You really just want to round through your spine as you tuck your hips towards your ribs, engaging your abs and glutes. Even think about drawing your belly button in as you exhale to pull your abs in harder. Then begin to lower back down into that plank position. As you lower, try to go a little past that straight line as if extending to slightly drop your hips. You want to feel your abs almost fighting against you lowering to prevent your back from really arching. You're testing out your ab brace as you extend. Then tuck right back up, tilting your pelvis again. Don't push backwards as you do this movement. Keep your shoulders stacked over your elbows. Pause in each position to really feel your core working. Really move slowly through the movement to focus on feeling your abs. To modify this move, an incline works best. The higher the incline, the less pressure or strain there will be on your shoulders and even core, so you can really focus in on those abs working. You can also do this starting on your hands and knees, but be conscious that while it might look like the cat-cow stretch, you're truly engaging your abs to round up. I like to call this variation the vomiting cat because I want my clients drawing in their abs as if trying to really hollow out their belly. Move number two, lower ab plank. This move is not a traditional hands and feet or forearms and feet plank, but it is an amazing core isometric hold and a move that is great to target those lower abs. I personally call it the lower ab plank, so wanted to include it as an option because often when people have shoulder injuries and can't do planks, they feel a bit lost about what options are out there. So if you really need to take your upper body and shoulders out of the equation, this is a great option to target those lower abs. But don't forget about using the incline as a way to progress and build up as well. To do this move, you'll lie on your back with your arms down by your sides or hands behind your head. To start, you can raise your legs straight up towards the ceiling and tilt your hips towards your ribs to press your lower back into the ground. You can also start with your knees bent to really set up the posterior pelvic tilt before extending your legs. Maintaining that posterior pelvic tilt, lower your legs down so they're only an inch or two off the ground to hold. Better to even hold up a few inches higher to keep that ab brace and even squeeze your glutes. Focus on really bracing those abs as you hold. If you feel your lower back taking over, raise your legs up higher or even bend your knees. You can even just start with one leg extended at a time. Lifting your head to perform an upper body crunch can both make the move harder, but also help by flexing your spine. Make sure to breathe and focus on engaging those abs, keeping that posterior pelvic tilt. You don't want your lower back taking over. If it does, your lower back and not your lower abs are actually getting worked by this move. Better to modify and focus on those abs working than do a harder variation where your lower back compensates. Move number three, body saw. Extended planks or long lever planks have actually been shown to increase ab activation over the traditional plank, especially of the lower portion of the rectus abdominis. That's why it's key to include some extended plank positions in your routine. You just want to be very conscious you don't overload your neck and shoulders or let your butt start to hike up in the air as you do these moves. One great dynamic way to include the extended plank position in your routine over simply holding is the body saw. The great part about this plank variation, like with all plank variations, is you can do this move off an incline if you need to modify it. And if you have wrist issues, you can do it from your forearms, or you can also give yourself more space and change things up by doing this movement from your hands to work your arms more. To do the basic body saw plank from your forearms, 
set up in a plank position from your forearms and toes with your feet close together and elbows under your shoulders. You want a nice straight line from your head to your heels. Make sure to engage your back to support your shoulders and make sure they aren't shrugged. Then begin to walk your feet backwards, taking small steps. Keep your body in a nice straight line and don't let your hips sag towards the ground. Lengthen through your triceps and shoulders as you walk back. Walk back as far as you can while keeping your core engaged. Then walk your feet back forward until you're back in the standard plank position. You don't need to walk forward more than simply back to your shoulders or over your elbows. Make sure you feel your abs bracing as you extend back. Don't push your butt up in the air or let your hips sag towards the ground. Repeat walking back out. Remember, you can modify the move off an incline to reduce the strain on your upper body and core. To advance this move as well, you can also add in sliders, sliding back instead of walking. That reduces traction and even makes that pull back in so much harder. Just make sure you can control the move before progressing. Using these three plank variations, you can really work your abs while targeting that lower portion of the rectus abdominis even more. To use this as a workout, set a timer for 20 seconds per move, starting with the body saw, then the dolphin plank, and ending with the lower ab plank. Rest 20 seconds between rounds to make sure you can really focus on bracing hard each round and complete two to three rounds through. You want to focus on short intervals of work so you can engage everything harder over just focusing on holding for longer and letting your lower back or hips become overworked. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.